In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to create a stylized back button um, like in the web page. So if I if I go to my website here, corel.tips.com, and if you go to say basic tutorials, and uh, I'm going to pick one tutorial here, and I'm going to show you there's one icon here or we call it a button, stylized button in in the website that we're going to create. So if you look at this uh, back to basic tutorials uh, button, I stylize it so that it looks like it's, it's like a paper lifting from the web page. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going back to my Corel draw here and uh, if you're doing it for a website and you have to click on new and then you go to make sure to put it in web here uh, but if you're doing it for for printing because that can be also be used in printing you click on the corel draw default here so what i'm going to do here i'm just say i'm going to um, make it for print so i'm just going to corel draw default here i'll just make it eight and a half by eleven or letter size and click ok now First, I'm just going to create a rectangle here. And uh, uh, let's say I'm just going to type in back to tutorials. So that's my text. And uh, I probably will make an arrow here. So, so basically, I am going to create an arrow. CorelDRAW has uh, basic arrow shapes and if you go to this icon here for basic shapes and click on arrow and shapes you'll notice that you're going to have uh, different kinds of arrows here so i'm just going to choose just a simple arrow like that and i click and drag okay so that would be my my arrow so what i'll do i'm just going to put this in the side here and then i'm going to concentrate more on the effect which is this one here so I've got the rectangle, I know that's going to fit. So the first thing I have to do is to make this white. So click on white here. And, uh, and then I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to uh, click on the plus sign in my keyboard, which, uh, which is duplicate without, with, with offset. Without offset, I mean. So plus sign the keyboard, so I have two duplicates here now. I'm going to work on this one here okay so now if I click on my ellipse tool and because what we're going to do we're going to make distort this shape this rectangle shape to make it um, more suitable for your effect so I made an ellipse here and I'm just going to bring this up like that now I want it to make it exactly centered to the ellipse to be exactly centered to this rectangle here so what do you do? You click on the ellipse and then hold down shift and then click on this rectangle here and type in letter C. So typing letter C will you'll make it uh, vertically, sorry, horizontally centered. Sorry, vertically centered. So click on C and now it's like that. Now uh, I'm going to go to my smart field tool or so smart field and click on that one. So that would be my shape. Another way to do it is I'm going to select these two here, hold down shift and click on the ellipse and go to your property bar here and click on the um, simplify. Simplify is trimming overlapping areas among objects. So you click on simplify and now I only need this one so I'm just going to delete this ellipse here. So now I've already established a, uh, a shape here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my, to my drop shadow. So drop shadow, apply shadows behind or below objects. I click and then drag going down. Okay. And there's my drop shadow. Now with this drop shadow, you can, of course, you know, you can you can change the opacity of the drop shadow and then the feathering, which is this one here. 
So the feathering, I'm just going to lower it to 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 ten. Okay, so I'll make it ten, and then the opacity, I'll drop it down to say thirty. So I'll type in thirty here. Hit enter. So now I'm happy with this one. So what the problem here is this the both the shadow and the shape are grouped together. So I'm going to so I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to uh, separate the two. So I click on the drop shadow here and I go to arrange and click on break drop shadow group apart. So I click on that now I can separate this drop shadow and also my my shape. So I'm going to delete that. Now, we're actually almost done with the effect here. So the only thing I have to do is bring this up and, and bring this down like this. And since this one is behind, so what I'll do, I'll put this to, sorry, I'll put this behind. So this shape to be to, to the front. So I click on the drop shadow and then I'll go to arrange order the front of page. And there you go. Sorry, this one should be the front of page. Uh, so arrange order to front of page. Okay, so this one should be that should be the front of page. And then what I'll do, I'm going to remove the outline here. So right mouse stick on this uh, no outline icon or no outline no fill, and I have no no outline now. And then I have to just have to adjust this one going up like this. It's really up to you if you want to. You know what we'll do? We'll put this back here. And I'll type that. I'll make that green. You can color it whatever color you want. Uh, it's just going to find a green here, a nice green. Let's say this one here. And I'll put this to top. So I go arrange order to front of page. And I'm going to make it the same as this one here. Or shift page up. This is bringing the object to the very front layer. So shift page up. And now I'll make it. And this is just a review. If I want to make the same, the same color, I just go to my, my eyedropper tool, sample this color here, and then drop this color there. And now I'm going to remove the outline. Okay. So now going back to my object here. So what I'll do sometimes what you want to do is you want to make it make the, the line here visible, right? So just click on the drop shadow and then just bring it up like that. Some more. And you can see that the line is a bit showing. There. I can also drop it like that to, to exaggerate the the curl. Now sometimes you can see the if I zoom out here, sometimes I notice that you can see that there's a line here. I don't know if you see it, but if you zoom in, it would disappear. So it's just like a preview. Uh, it's just like a uh, don't be don't be alarmed because when you print this one or you put it in the website you won't have that shadow or that line over there now you can really appreciate the effect here let's say for example I'm going to put the gray background here I tried this the other day and I put some gray and I'll put this to back so arrange order to back of page and uh, so I change it to a different color I'll center that sometimes I do this so now you have the back button like that so it looks like it's lifting right now, let's say 
that's okay with this kind of shape but let's say I have a different shape let's say I have an arrow so let's make an arrow here arrow shapes and then I'll say I'm going to choose this kind of arrow here I go like this and then I'm going to color this gray remove the outline so how would I make this lift the same effect as this one here again so I'm just going to edit this arrows can be added like when you have the the arrow shape uh, when you get that from the basic shape uh, and if you if you notice that there's like a red red square here that means to say you can edit that so you go to your shape tool so you have to click this first and then you click on this to edit it let's say, I, let's say I'm happy with that one and I'll just flip it this to, to, to have it face to the left side Okay, so I have that one and then and then I'll plus in my keyboard to have an offset a duplicate without an offset I'm gonna bring this down so what I'll do I'll just expand this there so um so with this one it's it's different from this one here because this one is just like a, a rectangle but this one is a different shape so what I usually do, do is I'm going to um, distort this object a little bit. You can't really distort this one without going to arrange and click on convert to curves. So I'm going to click on convert to curves and now it's curves. Now I can edit uh, it with a shape tool. So I go to my shape tool and let's say I'm going to edit this one. You know what I'll do? I'll move this up first and click on this and then I'm going to make it uh, actually it's a curve I'll make this a curve so click on this line and then right mouse click and I'll make it to curve so what I'll do I'll make it curve like that I'm going to do it the same with this one here curve and like that and then this one too maybe and then curve like this now I distorted it a little bit and you'll see why I did it so now I can I'm ready for the drop shadow so you click on your drop shadow tool and then click and then drag going down like this now I have the drop shadow let's say I'm happy with that one and I would now go to arrange and then break the drop shadow apart so now I can delete this object leaving the drop shadow here and now I'm going to put this object to front so arrange order to front of page and now I'm just going to position this in here okay so so now you would know why I did that so just to make it lift a little bit because if you just did it like this just a straight it would be different uh, that's why I made it curve like this over here and like that so yeah it looks nice it looks like the paper let's see this is the paper the hair is lifting from the from your object uh, from your paper There you go very simple let's try to make this white see the effect I'll make this white too now for example this one you want to emphasize the the um, you know, the shape here so we'll just move this up like that that's too much I'll make that white. 